Hello everyone, Emmanuel here. Today, we're going to expand on the previous video and create a chain dynamic stroke for Substance Painter from scratch. Remember, if you like our videos, you can support the content via Patreon or by buying some of our plugins on Gumroad. The links are in the description. This is part two of the chain videos. In the previous one, we learned how to create a basic chain and a chain mill. And in this one, we're going to use the same logic to create a dynamic stroke for Painter. The advantage of the dynamic stroke is that we can quickly create chain paths in Painter that will take a lot of time to create in Designer. So let's get started. We begin with the same logic as the previous version, so we add a paraboloid, connect it to a curve node, and adjust the curve to create that on like shape. Then add levels to tighten the bevel of the shape, And finally, multiply the shape by a gradient of linear 1. But this time, we need the gradient to be horizontal instead of vertical. So we rotate it 90 degrees. This is because the default follow path of the stroke goes from top to bottom. So it should look something like this. Finally, we create an output. And since this stroke will modify the height, we can just set the identifier to height and the usage to height as well. That way, the channel and channel mapping will be automatically configured by Painter. And now, all we need to do is to make this substance a dynamic stroke. The most basic way to do it is to add a parameter called stamp index of type integer 1. This simple parameter is a value that is used internally by Painter. So we don't need to assign any value or anything else, but we can use it to control the stroke. I'll explain later. We export it and import it to Painter. We can just import it as a base material, and we'll have a dynamic stroke ready to use. So let's create a paint layer, select the brush as material, and in the brush properties, let's adjust the spacing. Something like 49 works fine. Then enable the follow path, and in alpha, set the hardness to one. Now we paint, it's sort of working. The two main issues are that the height is pushing the geometry below the mid level, and that we need to alternate the shape orientation. So let's fix the issues. The height subtract can still be fixed without levels. Where we set the levels out low to 0 0.5. And now for the alternate shape, we will use the stamp index. As I said earlier, stamp index is used internally by Painter, and it indicates which stamp is being painted by the brush. So we can create a simple grayscale switch with the first input being the image we already have, and the second one being the same image rotated 180 degrees with a transform node. Now for the switch value, we will create an empty function, and we will use the stamp index to define the shape we want to paint. Since the shape will only toggle between two shapes, we can use the module operation. So we create a get integer and set it to stamp index, Create the modulo, and in the integer node, set it to 2. That way, every even stamp index value, the brush will paint the first shape, and every odd value, it will paint the second one. Then, since the switch is expecting a boolean, we create an equals node to compare the result of the modulo to 0. And that should be all. So let's try again in Painter. Let's create the paint layer, set the material, adjust the brush parameters, and it's sort of working. We now can get the alternate orientation of the shape, and we no longer add holes to the surface. But the issue that remains is that the shape is not blending. Between each stamp, instead of blending, is replacing the values of the previous stamp. So we need to create an alpha or a mask for each stamp in the stroke, and set it as a mask parameter. So let's create the mask. When creating the mask, we need to consider that each new stroke will fully replace the previous one. So we need to ensure that the mask is considering the shape intersections. We create a transform node to rotate the shape 180 degrees, and offset it by half in Y, 
Then we can subtract the transform from the original shape in the blender. That way intersections won't be replaced by the next stamp. And finally, we add a level to increase the contrast of the mask. But we also need to create an output and call it alpha. Back in Painter, we create the paint layer, we set the dynamic stroke as the brush material, verify that we have a spacing of 49, follow path enable and hardness at 1. Select the alpha as the mask and we paint it. It seems like it's working. Now, let's make it more interesting. We can now set an anchor point on the paint layer. Then on the top, create a fill layer. Enable the color, metal and roughness. Set the metal to 1 and the roughness to 0 0.1. And add a black mask. In the black mask, add a fill layer. And select the anchor point. Set the reference channel to hide, and in the levels, increase the contrast. And this working. We have a basic chain dynamic brush. We can add more variations if we want to, like multiple shapes or multiple profiles. By the way, you can find the dynamic brush with the extra parameters that I'm using right now in Patreon. As you can see, with this setup, we can create pretty interesting materials. And it's pretty easy to do. There are some downsides because it's not perfect, especially if you try to create some extreme angles. Some artifacts will appear on those scenarios. Still, it will work just fine in most case scenarios. Well, that's all for now. Hope you learned something. Remember to like and subscribe and see you next time.